YouTube, Justin Fuller, and today is a good day. I stole the keys of this 2024 Honda Civic hatchback sitting behind me in Sonic Gray, and we're gonna compare it, see how it stacks up to the 2023, and of course, all the other makes and models out there in the world. So let's hop on in. things I want to talk about is what's underneath the hood of this thing. So let me pull you on in and let's talk about it. So you are looking at a two liter engine putting out a 158 horsepower. Now this specific model is uh, automatic with a CVT transmission running up to, well, of course, front wheel drive vehicle. Understand that they do offer this trim level in a manual transmission. So if you happen to be one of those people that loves a manual transmission and a hatchback, you're not on a bad car. But while we're here, I just want to point out a couple things. Access your battery terminals, all your reservoirs, pretty easy to get to dipsticks and different things like that. And you've got additional space back there in case you need to run lines for an amp, a sub, anything of that nature. Now, the Honda Civic hatchback comes in two different models as far as engine goes. On your LX and your Sport, this is specifically a Sport, you get a two liter engine. Now, on the models above that, so if you're looking at like the EXL or a Sport Touring, you're looking at a 1.5 liter turbo. So understand if you're looking for additional horsepower, you're probably gonna wanna jump up to one of those trim levels because on the Sport and LX, you're gonna be at 158 horsepower. Now, I wanna throw a comparison up on the screen to see how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. Now, while that's up on the screen, I'll remind you that if you were looking at a 2023 model, it is going to be the exact same as far as horsepower and what's under the hood. So understand you might be able to drop down, save you a little bit of stuff, a uh, little bit of money, and buy something that's maybe got a few miles on it. All right, so a couple seconds ago, you heard me talking about, hey, depending on the trim level you pick, it could have a different engine type. So I want to take a second to quickly go through the different trim levels so you can understand where this lives and what's around it. So the base model of this vehicle is going to be an LX, right? So that vehicle starts at 24,950. Now above that is the Sport. That's what we're sitting in right now. Now they offer this in a manual transmission and they offer this um, in an automatic transmission. Now that starts around 26,350, and then depending on if you pick a, uh, you know, a premium color is what they call it for 455 extra. Bucks, much like this Sonic Gray, they're gonna pay a little bit more. Now above that, understand that there's the EXL model, right? This is where your 1.5 liters start, right? And then above that is gonna be your Sport Touring. So that's, I want all the bells, all the whistles. So the EXL model is 28,650, and then your Sport Touring is gonna be 31 and some change, 31,450. So just understand this, this car can range anywhere from like right under 25 all the way up to about 32, depending on the trim level and what items you want in it. All right guys, so here we are at the back of this car right next to the gas can, and there's a reason. I wanna to talk to you about miles per gallon. So the Sport trim level gets 29 in the city and 37 on the highway. So I'm gonna throw a comparison up on the screen so you can understand how does this car stack up against other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up there, I wanna tell you two different things. One, understand that if you're looking at like the LX model, it actually gets 30 and 38. So you're looking at about a mile per uh, gallon difference uh, depending on what trim level you're in. So understand that some of the trims are gonna be a little bit different. Not drastic, but it's there. Also, if you're looking at a 2023 model, Miles per gallon hasn't changed at all because you're using that same engine and transmission up front. So understand, exact same as far as the setup goes, as far as MPGs. All right guys, so chances are, if you're looking at something like a hatchback, cargo space is probably gonna be important to you. So let's talk about that. So let me pull you on in here. So uh, first off, let's just point out a couple things they've got here. A little privacy deal that they've set up a little bit different in previous years when you had that. And you've also got this additional one up here. Now down here, you do have carpeted floor mats that come standard with the car. Understand, not all makes and manufacturers offer free carpeted uh, floor mats. And then this is a cargo tray that they've thrown in. This is something the dealership has added specifically here. Now in the back, you're gonna see two different setups here. I've got the seat up and I've got the seat laid down. So with the seat, up, you're looking at 24.5 cubic feet of cargo space in the back of this car. Now understand if you're in that sport touring, I want to say it's 25.7. So not really sure how they're doing that, but there is a difference depending on the trim level. Now, if you roll over to this side, you have 46.2 cubic feet of space with those seats folded down. So I want you to understand what that space is as well. Now, let's talk about what's underneath here, because if you flip this bad boy up, it's kind of cool. You've got your spare, which is a full diameter spare, just not, it's full height, just not full width. And then you've got this little guy right here. So if you don't know what this little guy is, no big deal. I'm gonna explain it. It actually is related to gas. So if I'm over here at the gas cap, let's say I ran out of gas and I need to be able to pour gas in there. Well, this has got a valve on it now. It's not a cap anymore. So I need something to be able to hold this open while I pour the gas down into it, because chances are you might not have a gas can with you. 
That's the function of this little funnel. All right guys, so I threw a lot of dimensions at you, but I wanna revisit those. So in the back from the seats folded up, you've got 24.5 cubic feet. I wanna throw a comparison by the screen so you can understand how does this car stack to other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I'll remind you if you're looking at a 2023, it ain't gonna matter, it's gonna be the exact same cargo space. I think you're seeing a theme here related to 23 and 24. Now, with the seats folded down, you've got 46.2, I think I said, cubic feet of cargo space. So I'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and manufacturers out there in the world as far as, hey, if I'm using the full potential of my cargo space, right? If I'm planning on camping and I'm taking a whole bunch of stuff with me, maybe I plan a band, I need to load up a drum set, a bass, and amps, you know, whatever the case may be. I wanna throw a couple bicycles back here. Whatever it is that fits your lifestyle, you'll get a better understanding. All right, guys, so before we go any further, there's something really important I wanna to talk to you about, and that's, of course, hey, if I'm in this sport model, what if I'm not sure if this is the trend for me? Maybe I wanna drop down to the LX or maybe I wanna jump up to that EXL. Well, let's talk about that for a second. If I drop down to the LX, how much money is it gonna save me? But what are the list of items that I'm gonna give you up? So I'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can see, hey, this is gonna save me a little bit of money, but I'm gonna give up these items so that you can decide if that's worth it to you. So once you've taken a look at that, let's talk about going the other way. If I'm in the sport, but I'm thinking, eh, maybe I wanna spend a couple extra bucks a month and I wanna get that EXL, right? So if I jump up to the EXL, what additional money is that gonna cost me? And then two, what are the extra items that I'm gonna get for that, right? So this way you can have an understanding for it. Living in the sport model, understanding there's something above you and below you, what are those options? How much is the shift in money? And of course, the amenities that I'm giving up or receiving. All right, guys, so here we are in the second row of this Honda Civic Hatchback Sport. So let's talk about some materials, some spacing, and a few different things here. So as far as leg space, I have the front set up for me, a six foot, 250 pound guy, uh, and I've still got some leg space back here. Not a ton, but I've got it. So understand that you have 37.4 inches of leg space in this vehicle. Now, if you're looking at a standard Civic, right around that same range. If you're looking at the Accord, I wanna say it's like 40 inches or 40.8 inches. So even if you jump up to its big brother, you're still gonna be just a few inches different. But while we're here, I wanna throw a comparison up so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. While it's up, I'll remind you once again, the 2023, gonna be the exact same. So you don't have to worry about that in case you wanna shop for something that's pre-owned or you can find one still on the lot and save a couple bucks. So material wise, the Sport does something kind of interesting. They do a cloth leather kind of mix here. So you'll notice right down the middle, I've got kind of a, a leather finish and then I've got cloth and then I've got leather down the sides again. So they do this like hybrid mix in the Sport model. It's kind of cool. It's not a full leather. Um, uh, use so if you have kids if you have dogs and you're like man my dogs my kids or whoever's just gonna tear that up hey this isn't a bad option it has a little bit of a blend of both so you can feel a little bit nicer than a base model uh, but not a full leather setup to where you're like man this is something I got to take care of and really watch out for now arguably my biggest knock about the back seat of this vehicle is gonna be right here one they don't give you pockets on the back of these I don't know why it makes no sense it would cost nothing and then secondarily I live in Texas it is 97 degrees today we'll call that fall with quotations there are no air vents in the back of this car so I'm counting on air to leave that front area and make it all the way back to me. Now I'll tell you right now, I've got it on full blast and it's getting here, but it ain't great. All right guys, so here we are up at the front of this vehicle. Uh, so I wanna talk to you about leg space and of course the seats. So you've got 42.3 inches of leg space in the front of this car. It is plenty of room. You can put these seats back, you'd be like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and you'd be just fine. And you'd be a bigger dude too, and you'd be just fine there as well. Even the center stack here, it doesn't shoot super wide to where you can't open your legs up. Most of my guys will kind of know if you're a bigger dude, it's kind of a thing. Um, so understand the leg space here, pretty decent, but I wanna throw a comparison up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. Once again, I'll remind you, if you're looking at the 2023, it's gonna be the exact same, so nothing to worry about there. Now, while that's up, I will also remind you that this is a manual seat on this side and a manual seat on that side. So if you were looking for something like a powered seat on your driver's side or powered seats in both, you're gonna need to be on certain trim levels. So I'll throw something up on the screen so you can understand what trim levels offer power seats and how many. All right, guys, so as far as the front seats go, you can see I have that same theme right here. So as far as a cloth finish with kind of like a, I wouldn't even call it a racing stripe, but some sort of stripe down the center, and then I've got leather that runs along the sides. Weirdly enough, you don't have leather here on your center stack uh, or, or where your elbows would rub, which I'm okay with because typically I get a little sweaty there and I want it to be dry, uh, but you'll find in a lot of the other makes and models, that's where leather would live and it'd be cloth everywhere else. So kind of an interesting twist there. Understand that I believe there's two different colors. The Sport is always gonna come with a black interior. So if you don't want black interior, this ain't gonna be the trim for you. But while we're here, I'll throw up a couple things here so you can understand uh, as far as the color options, as, as far as interior and some of the colors of the vehicles, right? Because that can be a question too of well, what color options are available, what comes with what, that sort of thing. I know that can be very confusing to figure out 
what has the options that you want. All right, guys, so as far as your dash layout goes, I like this nice clean line that they've made with the AC vents in it. It just keeps things very clutter free. My AC controls are right here. Down below, I've got my USB and a power outlet. One thing I really don't like, this is not big enough for me to fit my phone in uh, with it plugged in. So it just kind of annoyingly sits like this and it's gonna rattle and move around. If I go diagonal, I can kind of get it, but just something to be aware of. Uh, you've got two cup holders here. I've got different drive modes in this car. So a sport, a normal, and an econ. Sport meaning it'll rev at a higher RPM and give me more get up and go. Normal, I think we all know. And then econ improves the gas mileage, but it's gonna affect that takeoff and go, right? Uh, if I wanna turn off my idle stop start in this car, this is what I would use to do it. Understand you're gonna have to hit that button every single time you get in the car and turn it on if you wanna turn that off. I don't know of a way to turn it off permanently. There may be a delete or a fuse you can remove, but I don't know much about that. Parking brakes electronic, set it, lift up and pull. Uh, to remove, press down, you'll see the LED turn off. Brake hold set up with your car to where if it's in drive and I have this feature on and I'm wearing my seatbelt, I can press this button. When I come to a stop, uh, it'll hold the brake for me and I can leave the car and drive. So great for like drive through lines and stuff like that or stopping the traffic. And then I've got my center console in here with some nice space here. I've got a shelf and you can see my keys down and in there. So nice deep shelf that I can store stuff in. Now, before I flip you around and start talking about the dash layout and some of the features and the buttons and the knobs on the steering wheel and the touch screen, I wanna talk to you about the stereo system because I know that for a lot of guys out there, this might be important and girls too, right? Whoever. Uh, this has got a 160 watt speaker system with four speakers in it. My face kind of says it all. I mean, if I crank it way up. It's okay, it's not awful, don't get me wrong. I've heard way worse, uh, but it's not great. So I mean, typically, if that's something you're into, you're probably gonna wanna throw a sub, an amp, you know, something else in the car, but you could get by, right? I could drive down the road and be able to listen to music and be just fine, but understand by trim level, you are gonna have some options. If you go up to that EXL model, I wanna say it's a 180 watt speaker system, and I think it's a six speaker system, or maybe it's eight speaker system. Uh, and then if you jump all the way up to that sport touring system, it has a 12 speaker Bose system. Uh, so I'll, I'll throw some trim levels up and some, some, some systems so that you can kind of understand but as far as like what it has in this car it's definitely not the worst thing I've ever heard. I've heard a lot worse. Uh, so just understand you may wanna make some changes, but you could get by with what it offers. All right guys, so here we are on the steering wheel. It's not super cluttered, but there is a good amount of buttons and I just wanna show you what they are. Home button here is gonna control what you see up there and then I can scroll, if you can see my finger rolling, it's gonna scroll through and then to select, I just press down on that to, to select whatever that menu option is. My voice command button right here as far as for you know directions of this, call this person, that sort of thing, if I wanted my Bluetooth options. Source will jump through all my audio options. So FM, AM, uh, right now I've got uh, the Android Auto hooked up. Uh, if you had Bluetooth or if you had something plugged into USB, you'd have some additional options that you'd see here as well. And then I can jump to my next tracks and control my volume right here. Right, so easy enough. On the right side, you've got a couple different uh, Honda safety features. So first is your adaptive cruise control. I can get up to the speed that I want and set my speed. Right, when you do this, you're gonna see this little icon appear here. Now, once you've done that, you can press this and it'll it'll hold the distance that you select between the, you and the car in front of you. Meaning if I'm driving 65 down the highway and a car gets in front of me and slows down, it'll keep that distance and slow my car down. And then when I get out from behind him, it'll take my car back up to the speed that I've designated right so kind of cool if you just want classic cruise you can just press and hold this button and you'll hear a beep and it'll say cruise mode selected right and if i want to flip back just hold it again boom i'm good to go now this next button is lane keep assist right so when i engage this button you're going to see a little the same icon appear here what it does is it uses the camera up here to detect the lines out on the road so if you're driving down the road you're in the middle of highway you're in that middle lane and you start to drift to the left or the right it'll actually correct for you and keep you centered so this way you don't get distracted you looked over your shoulder or something your your dog your kid whatever you spilled your coffee and you looked away and then you actually drifted in the lane and you hit somebody this will prevent that. And what's cool about this feature is you can turn it on and off anytime you want. All right, guys, so I'm not going to go through all of the different menus here over to the far left here, but I want to walk you through a couple just to explain what they are. Range and fuel, I think we all understand speed and time. This is going to be just related to MPGs if you want to track them. Maybe you're taking a long trip. Driver attention monitor, something they added in the last couple of years. If you're losing some of the safety features on this car, like the adaptive cruise control, the lane keep assist, you're not doing a lot. It's just there to make sure that you're still awake and paying attention. Seatbelts, this is a really cool one. They've added this in the last couple of years. It'll show you anybody who's not wearing a seatbelt on the car. Really cool if you got little ones in the car and you want to make sure that they're buckled up. You can check this really quickly and no. So kind of a nice feature that's newer. Now, as I keep going down maintenance, if you don't know much about Hondas, when you get down to 15% oil life, it'll give you an alert and it'll throw you a code. It'll say A1 or A2 or B1 or B2, and you can look that up. Honda's been doing this for years, so that way you'll know exactly what they're gonna offer you. They're gonna say, hey, you need uh, filters and a tire rotation, or you need oil change and filters, or whatever the case may be. Uh, so it's kind of nice to know if, you, if you're worried about being oversold when you go into your local store, uh, you know, dealership or shop or whatever it is, know that you can check this ahead of time. Now, continuing down, safety support. This has a couple different features that I wanna to talk to you really quickly about. So we talked about lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control, but I wanna to talk to you about the safety features in this car. So this car had road departure mitigation. Now it's much like lane keep assist, but it's designed for driving off the shoulder of the road. So if I got a little bit drowsy and started driving off the shoulder, it can be an audible alert and actually vibrate to what'll be like, hey, wake up, pay attention. Understand that you can turn this feature on and off right here, so you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Now the next one down is collision mitigation braking. So this is uses radar down in the front end of the car to detect cars in front of you. So if it's looking 
looking like you're coming up on a car and you're gonna rear end them, it can provide you with an audible alert, it can flash in the dash and then actually apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. So a super cool feature. I don't see a reason to turn it off, but in case you, you don't like it, you can turn it off. And understand that a lot of these, you can affect the settings too. So if you feel like one's a little bit too touchy for you or too sensitive, understand that you can change these things. So that's what's living there. Settings, this is where I can get to things like my TPS. Uh, I can get to window and door setups, uh, all these different things in here. If you wanna play with the meter setup, you wanna turn things off, turn the tack off, turn it on. Uh, all these different options here. Keyless access setup, if I wanna walk up and touch one door, it then unlocks all the doors versus just unlocking that single door. A lot of these different things. I've actually got tips and tricks videos that go over this stuff. I haven't made one on the 24 yet, but you can jump back to like a 22. Uh, it's the exact same stuff, right? It hasn't changed. So I'll throw a link up and I'll put one in the description in case you wanna see some, some tips and tricks on, on, on this car, right? That'll work on this vehicle. All right, guys, so let's talk about the touchscreen on this vehicle. Now you're looking at a seven inch touchscreen. If you were looking for that 10.4 inch touchscreen, you're gonna have to move up to that touring model. So just be aware of that. Now on here, you're gonna see some basics. Now, as far as media goes, I've got FM, I've got AM. Uh, I can plug in a USB if I wanna like store music onto a USB drive and listen to that. Uh, I can always go via Bluetooth and listen off my phone or somebody else's device, whatever the case may be. Um, and then I'm back to my same options, right? So FM, AM, USB, and Bluetooth. Now the alternative to that is can be Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. If you want to take advantage of those, this is a wired connection in this car, so understand you're gonna have to plug their phone in. Now, if you're looking to maybe purchase this car, but you really don't want that wired connection, understand there's dongles and different things out there that will allow you to plug that in and then use it via wireless. Uh, if you've never seen one, I'll actually throw a link up in the screen so you can check it out. Uh, I reviewed one recently that's, I wanna say, right around 60 bucks. Uh, so not a bad deal if you're looking for that kind of uh, setup. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and connected up my phone to the car via the USB cable in the front here. And now you can see that my uh, Android Auto is running. So I use a Google Pixel 7. Uh, so just to show you kind of what this looks like. Now understand there's a lot of different things that you could do. If you're not familiar with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, no big deal. Understand that what it does is it gives you the ability to pull some of those apps from your phone onto the touchscreen and use them directly on your screen. It just makes it a little bit easier to where you're not picking up your phone, you're not messing with stuff. So as far as like listening to music, using navigation, things like that, it makes it very simple. So you can see in here, I've got some basic apps in here that I use Spotify, Waze, uh, Google Maps, YouTube Music, just some basic stuff, WhatsApp, uh, my team set up and all these different things. So up here at the top, you're gonna see a couple different things. One, I've set up a contact, right? So I can you know, hit that button and it'll call my Google phone number. It's the phone number you'll find in the description. So if you ever had a question, you could shoot me a text or give me a call. More than happy to talk with you. Uh, the secondary one that I've got set up here is to direct me to the nearest gas station. So if you're ever out and you're like, oh crap, I'm running low on gas. It's nice to not have to hit maps or like use the voice command and do all those things. I can literally just hit this prompt. It'll then fill in the prompt for me and then show me the nearest gas station and then I could hit directions and it'll take me there. So it's kind of nice to have that shortcut set up. Now, if you've never done this and you don't know how, no big deal. These things are very easy to do. I'll actually show you. Scroll down to the very bottom here and go to your customization. When you click on that, it'll tell you, hey, we opened the app launcher. Now, when I open my phone up, right? You'll see those first two that are right there. But all I've got to do is at the top of the screen says add a shortcut to the launcher and they'll say call a contact or an assistant action. So call a contact, you know how that works, right? Pretty easy. Assistant action, I would then type in the command I wanted to give and then, you know, what I want to call it. And then I can test the command or do that, right? So I always recommend you test them first just to make sure they work, but very simple to do as far as creating an action in case you wanted to take you to the nearest Starbucks, the nearest whatever, uh, you know, whatever, whatever benefits your lifestyle and helps you out a little bit better. Now understand you can do a lot of other stuff here. If you want to customize the background, or do anything like that, you absolutely can. Uh, you don't wanna to go to customization, you wanna to go to settings for that. So I'm gonna jump into the settings here. Uh, there's a few different things that you can do in here. Wallpapers where you can change that background, but the layout is the one that I really like. Sometimes I want the media closer to me. Uh, so this way it can shift the media, right? So if I want you know, my media here and the directions over there versus if I wanna change that, right? So if I wanted to change that back, very simple, come in here, go to navigation closer. And now when I jump into this multi-menu uh, view, it'll show the navigation closer in my music. So just kind of depends on what you're doing, right? So understand, very easy to manipulate and play with this thing. You can go to the settings. Like I said, I could jump back and go to the wallpaper if I wanted to make changes there. Uh, it's got a bunch of like designated wallpapers that you can pick from. So if I wanted this background like this, cool. I select it, uh, jump back out. And then when I jump into my settings, you'll see that. So very easy and simple to set up, but it does limit you a little bit as far as what you can do. You know, you can't pull in Netflix. You can't pull in Amazon Prime, Cody. If you're interested in something that does allow that, I've actually reviewed an AI box that'll do it. Uh, I'll throw a link up in the, in the description and up at the top of the screen so you can check that out. It's actually a really cool tool and it unlocks like the full potential of your, your dashboard, basically making it into a tablet that you 
you can use with any app and do anything you want. So kind of cool. Now understand that this vehicle comes with three different views when it comes to backup cameras. So this one's giving you about 170 degrees. So you can see it's manipulated the screen a little bit to give you a little bit of that left and right. Uh, if you wanted just a classic backup camera, backing up straight, uh, and then this one actually looks straight down. So if you're backing up to a curb, a wall, a bush, you know, whatever the case may be, you can see where it is. Now you may be curious, hey, what do these lines represent? This is about six inches from your car. And this is, you want that, that car to be on this side if you're like parallel parking. And you'll see those dotted lines, these lines and all of these different uh, views. So kind of nice to know. All right, guys, so we made it through the entire video, right? We've made it through all of the different comparisons. So I want to go back and revisit all those. So if you didn't watch the whole thing, you got a little ADD, maybe you scrubbed through in a couple different parts, we're going to hit up everything. So let's go. All right, so at the front of this car, you've got a two liter engine putting out 158 horsepower. So I'm gonna throw that comparison up so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I'll remind you, the LX and the uh, Sport have that two liter engine. If you get in that EXL or that Sport Touring, then you're looking at that 1.5 liter engine that's gonna put out some additional horsepower. So be aware of those changes and differences. Now let's talk about miles per gallon. This car gets 29 in the city and 37 on the highway. Understand some of those other trim levels are about a mile per different, uh, you know, that 30 and 37-ish, 38-ish, right? So understanding depending on the trim, you could be there, but I want to throw a comparison up so you can see how this specific trim level stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. Now, after we talked about miles per gallon, let's talk about front row leg space. You've got 42.3 inches of leg space inside of this vehicle. Quite a bit of space, right? I'm sitting here comfortably, six foot, 250, not a little guy, right? So understand that. I want to do a comparison up so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. Uh, now, after that, let's jump to the second row. Second row, this car has 37.4 inches of leg space. It's decent, right? I can sit behind myself and be okay. If I took a long road trip, would I be okay? Eh, probably, uh, but you know, I could use a little bit more space. Now, if you're jumping into the Accord, you could get that extra three inches of leg space, but I don't know that that makes a difference. And I don't know if you know if you really want an Accord, right? Uh, but hopefully you got a chance to look at the comparison of this car's second row leg space compared to other makes and models out there in the world. Understand all these comparisons I've done so far. If you're looking at a 23, they're all the exact same. It makes no difference. 2023, 2024, almost identical car. Uh, after that, let's talk about cargo space. So in the back of this car with the seats folded up, you had 24.5 cubic feet of space inside of the vehicle. So I want to throw a comparison up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in case your hat's back shopping and you want to understand. Now, when you flip those seats down, you've got, I believe, 46.2 cubic feet of space back there. So Pretty decent, right? But I want you to understand how that stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. So I'll throw that up on the screen as well. Now, outside of that, what do I think about this car and the trim level specifically? The Sport trim is kind of deceiving in the sense that they call it a Sport, but the performance really isn't any better. It actually gets better when you go up to the EX, right? Which doesn't make that much sense to me, but it has a performance-based look. You know, if you want black alloy wheels, if you want a, a body package, certain trims and different things like that, it, it can make a difference. But while we're talking about that, I quickly want to revisit and just say, hey, if you're, if you're thinking about the Sport trim and you want to know if I drop down to the LX, how much money is it going to save me and what items am I giving up? I'm going to throw that up on the screen. And then after that, if you're thinking, ah, I like the Sport, but do I want to go up to that EXL and spend that extra money? Do I want that leather? Do I want the additional uh, speakers? You know, do I want some of those extras? I want to throw that up on the screen so you can understand what that's going to cost you and two, what is the list of items that it's going to get you by spending that extra money? So with all of that said, hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully you liked the way I presented. Do me a couple favors. Press the like button to let me know I'm doing a good job. Secondarily, leave a comment. If you feel like I missed something or something you want me to go over or there's a car out there that you want me to review, let me know. I'd be more than happy to do it. Uh, third, I hope you subscribe to the channel so you want to make cool videos like this. You'll receive it. And then lastly, share the video, man. You got a friend who's shopping? This is helpful. I think so. Hopefully you do too. Other than that, like, comment, subscribe, and all the things. Later, guys!